Hmm. So, hello, and uh, this is uh, Silly Kelly, and I have got out all the uh, Transformers and all of the jet fires from Transtech that were painted up for Rebels. They were, some of them were in the background during the Transtech movies. The reason for tonight's adventure here is that I have received the brand new Jetfire. And there is the brand new Jetfire on the right. Brand new Jetfire toy. Now, um, here is the one from eight years ago. Jetfire from eight years ago. And here's the one from 20 years, 30 years ago. The Jetfire. Um, it, 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 all of his armor, well, uh, He's pretty good condition for being 30 years old. He's one of the better ones in the collection. And not much yellowing. Uh, and he he's a Robotech, basically. He's a, he's a Veritech 1JS. And just to uh, clarify that, here is a Veritech 1JS uh, from, uh, from Robotech and Macross. Also, he is similar to the one in Do You Remember Love, where they painted them white, and they did black on red right here. So he's like that one as well. I believe I have a Do You Remember Love one among these right there. Yeah. So yeah, uh, here. What's left of one right there? There's one. Um, <laughs> he's been done over a few times. Yeah. So these are these are re reconditioned jet fires. Uh, they're not for sale, but I've reconditioned them, and uh, we reassembled them, and um, they uh, they will function. They transform, and they're not all broken. Now, some of the jet fires from the 1984 release had defective right shoulder or left shoulder. So when you transform the shoulder, we go, Psh! and you'd be left with a lot of stuff. Okay, the 1984 jet fires. All, a lot of them had a defective shoulder. So when kids transformed them, they broke the shoulder, rending the toy kind of moot. In 1985, they fixed the shoulder problem. However, they were the ones with the little Macross symbol on them, the 85 ones. However, the backpack would fall off and become all So a lot of these are hybridized from the two. Fix the shoulder problem. A lot of them have a different arm. <laughs> this guy, like this guy here. <laughs> He's really yellowed. Now this is not in itself a comparison review video thing showing how it transforms and all that. Someone's already done that. So what I wanted to show off was uh, was how they're how similar they they are. We can take the uh... now you'll notice on the uh, Hijicho uh, Rick Hunter and Roy Foker version here that uh, those are slightly different. Cockpit slightly more detailed. Uh, structure is the same, pretty much the Bandai Takara model there. Uh, this other one is less detailed, has a shorter nose, is more mass production Takara version. So it's like the Takara version. Uh, yeah, and there's one in between called the June version. And that is like the green ones, the blue ones there. The June version, it's a cheaper version. And uh, so yeah, there's somewhere in between that and the other one. Usually, someone has replaced a shoulder or an arm. You can see on this guy. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, a jet fire. Let's transform him to uh, robot mode. I have transformed I have transformed into robot mode. We don't need to see how to transform. You can look that up. Uh, here's the other guy. We don't need him anymore. Uh, he's in robot mode. He has, he's a, definitely a Robotech, and that's why we did Transtech, Transformers meets Robotech. We thought, why not? They have a jet fighter. So we actually put that in canon, and we brought the SDF-3 home. Well before uh, the other guys at Tommy Yoon even thought of it. <laughs> this one is one of the ones with the backpack that's starting to go, looks like. Um, yeah, so here we have... We have almost no articulation in the... There's nothing in the hips that make it articulate. Turn it. Uh, the knee joints come up. But I'm afraid to move the knee joints on this because it's so old. Uh, the arm and elbow joint swivels a little. It's on a pivot. Hand. Head swivels. Yeah, pretty much. 
The Autobot sticker is actually in surprisingly good shape considering how old this is. Uh, and so, yeah, so there's the jetpack and uh, Jetfire. There's Jetfire. So, uh, yeah. Eight years ago, we came out with a. Uh, they came out with this guy. A Jetfire Skyfire hybrid. Apparently, they couldn't get permission from Tomi Takara, but they had permission from Bandai uh, to use the mold for the Robotech one. So they did this, which is close, but as you can see from the other one, small. It's very small. And uh, yeah, so it's got the jetpack and everything. Let's get him into robot mode. Okay, there he is. He's got a little more articulation. Not going to go into that, other people have. Uh, here is Jetfire next to Jetfire. There he's next to him. He's really, really short compared to him. He's like prime size compared to him. He's like, like his little little buddy or something. And he's short compared to him. So even if I do that and I uh, stand him up real straight, yeah, his articulation is a little better than this guy. Somewhere in between Armada and and the uh, the Michael Bay stuff. Uh, he's, he's fun to play with, but, uh, yeah, so, but I haven't for a long time. It's eight years ago that this one came out, and then we come to, uh, the new, the new guy, so, those parts in a minute. Okay. This, uh, this new one, as some people have said on the internet, on this new one, um, has, uh, an homage to the, to the, to the Veritech in jet mode. And also, it is an homage to the comic book one, in terms of its uh, funny-looking underside that looks like a robot deal. Uh, they have they. Uh, it's cool though. Uh, have it does have this weird chrome paint, and hopefully they will make later versions of it that don't have the chrome paint. But it does, and it flakes off. I'm told, but I just got it, so it hasn't flaked off yet. So. And also, they didn't point out that this red is almost an orange red. This red on the body is as bright as on the original Skyfire. Really, really bright, shiny red. It's like really, really shiny. It's like, wow. <laughs> it doesn't really go with a chrome painting. I don't know why they did that. It's the camera reflecting off it. Okay, yeah, so let's get this buddy in robot mode. He doesn't have a Gearwalk mode. Tried it. it. Looked silly, <laughs> but it, yeah, it is very similar to the one that I built. Very similar. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was also Scattershot as Prime in the movie. Of course, he was made out of wood and he was kind of cheap looking. But... Now there's Scattershot as Prime, and there was Jetfire. Jetfire wasn't actually in the movie, so yeah, but he's similar to ones that I've built as as yeah, out of wood. They've all since fallen apart, of course, and hopefully this one won't. Yeah, just thought I'd point that out. But I would have make it, made it look more like the jet fire in the cartoon. I would have had the, the nose on the outside. Uh, the, uh, the, it looks a little bit like a F-22 and a little bit like a Tomcat F-16, like, like Skyfire, crossed together, like they had a, they had a kid or something. But actually, what it is, is it is a, an F-35 which looks like both together. It's an F-35, so there you go. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, next generation aircraft. Okay, here is Jetfire, new Jetfire. 2014 Jetfire and 2000, was it six Jetfire? I guess? Yeah. And Jetfire, Jetfire. In robot mode. He is actually smaller than this guy. He's actually smaller than the Macross one. Now what you could do, you totally could do this, and you could, okay, his back piece, his backpack is ridiculous. But yeah, he's smaller than a Macross Jetfire. Uh, he'd fit with the Legends class tinier one, ones here. But he's smaller. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The, he does have a design flaw on the growing area, same as on uh, some of the Autobot triple changers and Decepticon ones. The growing area is this little bar thing, and it goes splits this way and that way. 
The arms have a bar thing that splits inside. Goes this way and that way. Kind of like that Carter one that I made. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, and so like, if this thing like was played with a lot, it would come loose. And it would essentially fall over. So yeah, they gotta fix that. But uh, this has just been transformed twice, so uh, no problem. I like that it looks like the jet fire from the show, from this end. I don't necessarily dig the whole, I have a giant backpack, mmm, overcompensating for something deal in the back. There were a couple of fan-made ones that are actually more truer to the uh, cartoon ones, and uh, those are actually cooler. They can get them at Big Bad Toy Store as well. I got this at Toys R Us, so it wasn't Big Bad Toy Store. But it would be cool to have, like, uh, they retool it again. Find a way to tuck this down and bring them, bring the legs up so he has more height and less backpack. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah, so, uh, here's the, uh, Macross Jetfire. You know, this one really doesn't look that much like Jetfire either. His arms sort of do. He's got the right idea with a cockpit, but it was a little off. Some people have modified theirs to look more like that one before that one came out. Uh, yeah, uh, if this guy had, like, body armor that made him look three times bigger, that would totally do. <laughs> but no. So, yeah, um, there he is, your jet fires. And this is not an official, just for fun, thing. So, that's all it is. So I'm going to show off some other jet fires here. You see, uh, you see, toward the begin, the end of TransTech, uh, we're doing, doing the making of our, our mini-series uh, fan film, we had a bunch of jet fires that were in a state of disrepair. Many of them were painted up and put on screen to make it look like Rick Hunter and Lisa Hayes and them had a fleet of Veritex. So a lot of these are from that. Some of them are newer. But they're all from that time period where we had a lot of broken up jet fires we got online because everybody wanted to get rid of their jet fires about nine years ago before that new robot came out. Uh, yeah, so so we got a lot of them from that time period because people were just tired of their jet fires. So, yeah. Uh, Calcat is actually the one that acquired literally 20 of, 22, 23 of these guys. Well, actually 40 of them if you count the you know, I had to rebuild them into 20. So it was probably closer to 35 and then they were broken. So they had to be reassembled into these guys. Many of these were going to be featured in a, a spin-off that was going to be launched in 2010. And it was going to be called uh, Transformers Rebels. And many of these were going to be given cybernetic personalities and they were going to come out and do all kinds of things. It was something that uh, Tim and Mark's cards and I thought about. And it just didn't work out. There there wasn't really a script. There was, you know, showing these older Veritex is they're all Tomcats. It's kind of like, uh, well, that could be interesting, you know, as, as cannon fodder, but would it work? And fortunately, since then, there have been, you know, multiple other Transformers shows and characters and and much more articulated characters that would look better in, in a, uh, a Rebels movie thing. And what would you do with that? I mean, a Robotech Rebels, like the comic book, I guess. Uh, it would be fun to have, on occasion, one of them in it, like in the background, or because they do look neat, but uh, to have a whole series devoted to, like, Robotech Rebel pilots and, and G.I. Joes is just a little too ambitious, I think, for what we, for what we have here. Uh, yeah, we've got lots of Robotechs here. So, so yeah, uh, a lot of them. A lot of them are those ones that were uh, the, the bad shoulder. You can see on the bottom wherever the arm was replaced. This one, both arms were replaced. Uh, let's see, uh, this one looks like swapped arms from somebody else in there. Uh, uh, this is this is an island seeker. This is uh, from uh, Do you remember love? Actually, it's not. It is a reproduction built from from two or three different uh, Veritex to make it look kind of like an island seeker, but definitely not a close. And here we have an super ostrich, also from Do You Remember Love, 
Also, this is a repaint. This is not an original Super Ostrich. Maybe only the nose is. The rest of it is <laughs> three other different Robotex. Well, that's kind of cool. So I got those two because the real ones on the net are way too expensive. Why not paint them? Uh, yeah. Um, this is Max, sort of alternate Max Sterling one. Uh, here we have some fiery ones, and and uh, here's the uh, fodder, uh, cannon fodder one, sort of one. Uh, here's a red flaming one. Ooh, ooh. There's another one over there that's sort of a female, a pink one. Uh, and here we have another sort of an alternate cannon fodder one that looks like he's on fire in the process of, of burning through space, but it's just his camo. So that would be cool. Uh, here's a green one. <laughs> and these guys over here are, are June. These are the Korean knockoff of Takara. June Veritex. This is one too. <laughs> yeah, so that's cool. Um, they're not quite compatible. Yeah, so there's my Robotech collection. Robotech fighters. The Rebel thing really wouldn't have worked because it just had... It was just... Uh, weird, too ambitious, and they don't have a lot of articulation. So it would be a lot of talking head robots, which could, I guess, be fun. <laughs> a little bit. And, and yeah, it would just not have worked too well. <laughs> but, yeah, something like that could appear, but I think we're going to go in the direction of the Carta, do a sort of a, a Transformers thing that's more accessible to the fans out there that want to see a Transformer spoof. That would be after Star Trek Kaimara. Uh, it's done, of course. Um, but there's going to be little hints of it before Star Trek Kaimara is done. Here is uh, War of the Rebels. Here's the... Uh, this is a neat looking one. Yeah. Uh, here's, here's some banged up uh, Inchin Robo Macross uh, Mesopita guys. And this is the hilariously historical SDF-1 repaint, SDF-3, from TransTech-1. There it is. There it is, guys, TransTech fans. Uh, that's the SDF-1. We redid it for 2 and 3, and the redo is over there on the wall. Yeah, over there. Number 1. This was the one that was thrown out after, after Jim broke off the end pieces out in the ivy. It disappeared, and four years later, I found it at Goodwill. It was the same toy. The jets were broken off, and I bought it again at Goodwill. <laughs> and I reassembled it uh, sometime around, what was that? Was that? I see, 99, 2000, somewhere around there. <laughs> and then I rebuilt it as the SDF-3 from the Sentinels. So that's what it's supposed to be. And of course the Tommy Ryu Tommy Wayun books, uh, Yoon books, uh, and stuff in 2007 implied, oh, we're gonna find Rick Hunter and rescue him and stuff, and then they kind of didn't. And uh, but that was in 2007. We had already filmed Transec one, two, and three at that point. We already finished photography. We brought Rick Hunter home in our version, so he comes home in our version. So. <laughs> So we've already done it. So you guys, you guys are the production company is a little far behind there. There we go with the smokestacks. Yeah, we've already done it in our fan film. So there, we brought him home. Although in the Japanese version of the Inbit Invasion, called the Inbit Invasion, there, uh, there is no Robotech Expeditionary Force with Rick Hunter. It's just the Mars Division and the Jupiter Division. It's just part of the main fleet. So that 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 line is a cliffhanger because of dialogue in the American redo it isn't really it isn't yeah it's not <laughs> not supposed to be there in the Japanese one uh, Scott Bernard just takes off to rejoin the fleet that's the end nothing happens there's no subtext of him saying I'm gonna go find Rick Hunter because he doesn't know who that is because it's a completely different series and yeah as far as he's concerned they're, they're in, in that other in the original timeline no no but but we did we did Rick Hunter and Robotech Jetfire Skyfire. Now he looks like him, but uh, yeah, there are some really neat fan ones out there too. And there's the uh, 
Skyflare collection. Yeah, for rebels. So actually, at the end, at the end of the post-production of Trans Tech 2, when it looked like there were at least 11 other Veritex with different colors, there were. We did not fake that and just draw the same Veritech over and over again. There were actually 11 or 12 of those already done and we threw them in the movie. Well, they were still wet practically. <laughs> so yeah, they were in the movie. So in the Robotech scene, there were that many. In the first movie, there weren't. There were like some, some other models that didn't match. But by the second and third, we had 11 or 12. Now this is twice that many. But yeah, uh, just waiting around. And they're falling apart just in the box. So yeah, they they wouldn't really hold up too well. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, jet fires. Jet fires! Da -na -na -da -na. Okay, okay, here's... Uh, I turned this back on for a second. Okay, these two guys here were the main character, Jetfire, in Transtech 1, 2, and 3. Or at least 2 and 3. These were the 2 and 3 ones, and this was the one for take-up scenes. Tell by the bottom here, the arm, that was the take-up scenes one. And this one, without. So, uh, these guys were the ones from part 1. And some of those pieces are from one of my original jet fires. Probably the really, really yellow one. So yeah, some of those pieces are from that guy. So yeah, there, there were a lot of yellowed and other ones from uh, eBay. And yeah, so those guys are some of the ones from up here. But I just thought I would point out that, that there were numerous jet fires in the movie as not to break him anymore. So whenever there was a fight scene with him... It was one of these other guys standing in for him, which explains why there was like a yellow guy at some points in there. Uh, also, we had the Island Seeker in there as another character and did some other stuff with uh, the the uh, Ostriker as well, the Ostrich. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Max and Miria, of course, are these two leads right here. Miria and Max. They were actually... And uh, there's uh, Simono here. Guy from gets destroyed. He gets killed. These are they the June Vertex. And uh, yeah, so they are they they were in it. Since I don't have a Max and Miria officially. I painted other ones to look like a Max and Miria officially, but but yeah. I've got a I got a Hichi Joe Rick Hunter Macross in the uh, closet. As well as the uh the Foker one. But I'm not getting that out of the box. We'll keep that in there. So yeah, uh, yeah. This is the. Uh, so these were the hero ones from the movie. So there they are. There's a little guy. Let's fly the jet fire. Oh no! Now he breaks it. Yeah. So there they are. They should do another one where it's like leader class, where it, it doesn't have a big jet on the back of it. I like him. I mean, he was 50 bucks, so it's 48. 48 is a good deal. Don't, don't go any higher than that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so there you are. Uh, 50 with tax. It's good. Anybody offering? Anybody saying that's worth 60? It is not worth 60. It's 50. That's the limit. <laughs> But there you go. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Jet fires. Jet fires. Lots of jet fires. <laughs>